this adventure has been fun, but it's also been a little awkward because I haven't vlogged in so long that I just feel uncomfortable <laughs> doing it. So we'll see. Hello bookworm family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Danny. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to click the notification bell because you know it's always a mystery when I'm gonna post a video. And uh, if you have not already done so, please go follow me on at the underscore dancing underscore bookworm for more bookish content. Um, I did film a longer intro to this and I don't know what happened, so I am going to explain that in the next video. So I had recorded a whole intro to this vlog before I left my house and I don't know what happened. I don't know if I didn't hit record or I deleted it or what, but basically it didn't save. So here's the intro. <laughs> um, so today I ended up going on like a little adventure by myself, but first I had to sign my lease and my plan for the adventure was to go to Barnes and Noble and go out for the day um so I had that plan set in my head and then I had to sign my new lease and they're raising my rent so much like I looked it up it's still within the legal limit but it's like legally like right at the max of what they could charge someone so they have raised my rent a ton and I signed it because I've said before my house is like so close to my job it's in walking distance I absolutely love the location even if it is a crap apartment but um but yeah so I decided to go on an adventure and obviously seeing that my rent was being raised so much and knowing that it's six weeks till I go to Maryland oh my god six weeks so I'm going to Maryland for my studio's nationals and Basically, that means like our kids competed this year. We competed at two regional events um, and our kids qualified for nationals at one of them, which means they scored a certain amount and because they scored a certain amount, they're allowed to go and compete against people from all over the country instead of just the regionals. So um, all of our kids qualified that competed, which was amazing. We were very excited about it. And we have a bunch of kids that want to go, but it is in Maryland and I live in New York, so it is quite a quite a little hike um and it is expensive um you know I my boss and I are like sharing a hotel we're sharing gas we're sharing food stuff like that so we're doing it we're doing it for the kids really a hundred percent why we're doing it is for the kids we love the kids we're very excited to see them perform to have this opportunity but you know it's not cheap it's not free for us um just because we're staff so we're gonna be on a beach you know, our kids are performing. We actually just found out today one of our students got selected to perform with an elite group um, that does the opening number. So very cool. We're very excited for her. Um, so yeah, so it is exciting, but it is expensive. So I decided to take what I was going to do, which was go to Barnes & Noble and maybe buy some books and went the free route instead. My brother was here for the lease signing because he's my co-signer. So he did drop me off at the library, which is in the village. The village is not super close to my house it is the closest library that we have to me but it is not super close to my house i'm like kind of between like two libraries um but this one actually just got refurbished and it is gorgeous guys i can't wait for you to see these videos um i've only been there twice since the pandemic um and they were redoing it during the pandemic so um and the one time that I went, I just went to the children's section because I had Ava, Jacob, and Riley with me. So I was just in the children's section. I didn't leave from there. So today I got to see the teen section, the adult section. Guys, there are so many cool things there. And I can't wait to talk about it in the following part of this video. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to insert these clips of me kind of going on this adventure and um, what became of it. So here you go.
library here is really cute. I love all the refurbs they've made to it. Refurbs, apparently I'm that person that says refurbs now. <laughs> but even outside there's like little gardens and chairs and stuff to read in. Um, it's a little after eight, I think. I am kind of just walking downtown, which I know I shouldn't be after like a certain hour, but it's still pretty light out. Definitely feels like summer. Um, so if I'm gonna try to find a place to eat, I don't want to eat anywhere expensive because of how much my rent went up. Um, but I do want to get a little bite to eat and then head home. So I'm gonna try to find a restaurant around here. Don't really come down to the village much. It is kind of far from my house. Not like terribly far, but like kind of far. Um, especially for someone who doesn't drive, which I don't. So I Uber everywhere. My brother did drop me off though, so that did save me some money. But it is a very cute little area. I'm just trying to find a little place to maybe get some dinner or something. So I'm going to do that and then, uh, yeah, probably head home, probably Uber home and start reading some of the books and I'll show you guys what books I ended up getting from the library. I'm downtown and I just found this little bookshop, but it's closed. I'm going to have to check this out next time I'm around, but this actually is on my, this book right here is actually on my wish list, so I'm going to have to check it out, but it is closed right now. But that's good to know that they have a little, like, um, small business bookstore because the only bookstore I really knew in the area was um, Barnes & Noble. So. so there's two restaurants near here that I'm kind of debating between um, both kind of like barish places. I just like walked like straight into one of my dance students. <laughs> it's really weird. Like I don't know. I don't know. I think I want to try this place as like a little bar. So we're going to give it a go. Um, but it's weird vlogging again because I just like don't have the confidence that I used to to like not care about what people think. So I don't know. I think I want to go into like this little bar because then I can kind of like sit by myself and it's not weird because it's a bar. So I'm going to give it a try and then I'm going to head home. So yeah, so the library was amazing. Um, the refurbishments, super, super cool. But I did feel really, really awkward filming. Um, just like walking down the street, I noticed people like parked in cars with their windows open and I'm like, oh my God, I look like I'm talking to myself. Like, and it's weird. I thought I had already gotten over these fears of like filming myself and stuff like that. And they're all bad. There are a couple really cool things I don't want to tell you guys about that my library does. So first of all, so many unique seating areas um you guys saw the block chairs that have the chargers right on it that are kind of like little cubbies so you can have that have that privacy they have the spinny chairs lots of unique seating for kids that was pretty cool um another thing they have and it was one of the very first things i saw was a book club in a bag so you can get a bag um and it has six of the same books in it with um like these like book prompts and like questions and stuff like that and host a book club and you get to keep them for six weeks and so that was really um, cool. we have local like cool things um <laughs> that's the weirdest way to word it but we have a children's museum near us we have a glass museum near us we have an art museum near us um and one of the things they do at the library is they buy these yearly passes um, that they've worked out with these places and you can go and use your library card to check out one of the passes and you get it for three weeks um, to go one time. So it'll cover the admission, like it'll say on there, like it'll say like covers the admission of one adult, covers the admission of an adult and a child. So very cool. I feel like I am a horrible vlogger now. Anyway, my boss just called and we talked for two hours, so. Yeah, I just talked to my boss for two hours instead of finishing my train of thought. But my kitty's over here now. Hi, baby. Hi, puppy bing. Yes, I will always talk to my cat like a baby, just so you know. So don't expect anything different because she is a baby. Anyway, um, so I just talked to my boss for two hours. And I had to go back and watch what I filmed before she called. So I didn't even remember what I was talking about. Uh, my Barnes & Noble order. So I had a gift card for my birthday. I ordered three books. I ordered The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I ordered um, Jagged Little Pill, which I will talk more about in a second. And I ordered um, this like book. Like if you bought a book, you got it for $5 or something like that. I don't even remember the name of it. 
Anyway, so I get a message today, and it's like, your book order has been delivered. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a book order. I love my book order. Um, so I was really excited for my book order. And then the sad news came that I had got it sent to not my previous address, but the address before my previous address. So my previous address is my brother's house. And I thought that that's what it was. So I called him, and I was like, hey, I think a package is there for me. He's like, oh, there's nothing here for you. I was like, oh, uh, okay. So I look it up and no, it's from two addresses ago. So my brother and I drive over there before I go to the library and I knock on the door and I'm like, hey, you think a package got delivered for me? He's like, I already brought it back to USPS. I was like, oh, cool. Uh, they're closed. So um, I like asked Barnes and Noble, I'm like, what? normally happens during this I like went on their chat line and they're like well USPS will probably send it back to us and once we get that you'll be issued a full refund and I was like okay well I paid for the uh, gift card so how does that work and they're like oh it'll go right back on the gift card I'm like okay cool 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 but I was really disappointed because I was looking forward to reading Jagged Little Pill this weekend like that was gonna be my memorial weekend read so um Anywho, uh, I ended up finding it at the library. Um, so, Jagged Little Pill. So, this says, I'm just going to read you guys what it says. It says, after the events at a party, five teens' lives will never be the same. A timely and gusty YA novel based on the Tony and Grammy award-winning musical musical from Alanis Morissette, Diablo Cody, and Glenn Ballard. Frankie wants justice. Joe wants to be seen. Nick wants to be good. Phoenix wants connection. Bella wants to be believed. Moving, heartfelt, and raw, Jagged Little Pill, the novel, draws on the musical story and gives readers deeper glimpses of the characters. It's a story about the power of voicing your pain, standing up for what's right, and finding healing and connection. So yeah, so if you guys know the music of Alanis Morissette, she was from, I want to say like the 90s, early 2000s. So the music in the musical is all Alanis Morissette music. Um, so kind of like what they did with like Mamma Mia, how it's all ABBA music. It's all Alanis, Alanis Morissette's music. So um, the musical sounds really good to me. And I saw that it was a book version. So I ended up getting that at the library and that's going to be my Memorial Weekend read. However, of course I was at the library so I didn't leave with just one book. So the other book I got is Road Tripped by Pete Hopman. So let me tell you what that's about. This is another YA and it says Stephen Gerald Gable aka St Stiggy needs to get out of Minnesota. His father only recently took his own life. His mother is a shell of the person she used to be and his sort of girlfriend ghosted him and skipped town. What does he have to stick around for? Armed with his mom's credit card and tourist map of the Great River Road, Stiggy sets off in his dad's car. The only problem is life is on his own isn't what is ex exactly expected. Stiggy, don't we know it? <laughs> Soon enough, he finds himself at a crossroads. Should he keep running from his demons or let them ride back home with him? Uh, so that's good little summer read, it sounds like. So then I got uh, Destroy All Monsters by Sam L. Miller. This is another one. I think this is another YA. Yes, it's another YA. Um, this is another one that I saw online, but it says Solomon spends most of his time in Darkside, an otherworldly city teaming up, teeming with fantastic beasts and oozing corruption. There he and his fellow other siders are targeted by establishment forces that fear them and their awe-inspiring powers. Forces that control Solomon City and want to capture him, break him, and take away his powers. They call him a monster and they want to destroy him. Ash lives in the real world, the one with the school and bullies and boys and clueless parents. Ash wishes she could escape to another dimension too, but when she looks at Solomon, she knows there's something very wrong with him something in his brain something that started the day she fell from his treehouse a day neither one of them can remember as Solomon drifts further and further away from reality Ash becomes desperate to bring him back but to do so she's certain she must recover her memory from that day 12 years ago and find out what really happened so um and then the last one I got uh, was in the middle grade section um and this is called the grim legacy and what if fairy tale magic really existed? Lonely at her school, Elizabeth takes a job at New York City or at the New York Circulating Material Respiratory, hoping to make new friends as well as some cash. The rest. Nope. Not respiratory. Repos re 
<laughs> repository. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't say that word. Okay, so she takes a job at a repository. The repository is no ordinary library. It lends out objects rather than books, everything from tea sets and hockey sticks to Marie Antoinette's everyday wig. It also has a home, it's also home to the Grimm Collection, a secret room in the basement. That's where powerful items straight out of the Grimm Brothers Grimm fairy tale books are locked away. Seven League Boots, a table that produces a feast at the blink of the eye, Snow White Stepmother's sinister mirror that talks in riddles and has a will of its own. When the magic objects start disappearing, Elizabeth and her new friends embark on a dangerous quest to catch the thief before they're accused of the crime themselves or the thief captures them. Uh, so yeah, so four books I got from the library and I'm excited to read all of them. Um, I have six weeks, I think it said, to read and return them. So I'm pretty excited about that. So those are what I got, but I am going to read Jagged Little Pill this weekend. I'm going to finish up. I did just want to make a quick disclaimer that I did start filming this video before the tragic shooting happened in Texas. Um, I did just want to say that my heart goes out to all those families that have been affected um, and that have been um, impacted by this disaster. And I'm so incredibly sorry for your loss if you're somebody who know somebody who was um involved in this and um you know I just have no words just wanted to just do that little disclaimer because um I do have a book that I am talking about within this video that does have to do with the school shooting so um I will flash a little icon um it will be this icon right here uh, before I talk about that book. So if you don't feel comfortable listening to those parts right now, I completely understand. Um, but like I said, I did start reading the book before the event happened. Um, currently not done with the book, so I don't know if I'll finish it because this is very fresh and new and weighing heavily on my heart. But um, I did just want to give you guys a heads up um, that I am talking about a book that does feature that in this video and again my heart goes out to everybody who is impacted and I really you know I hope every day that there will be change in our I'm world. I'm currently reading um The Shape of Thunder by Jasmine Warga and this is about I'm only a couple chapters in right now but this is about two girls um who were in a school shooting one um her sister has died or I don't know if they were in a school shooting or the school shooting was at an older school but um one her older sister died in the school shooting and one of them their brother was the shooter so it's a very interesting uh, multiple POV on that um and then I'm also reading I only have like an hour left of it it's an audiobook of the Swiss Family Robinson which <sighs> I'm really into classics right now but not this one this is not the one for me um so yeah so I'm gonna read those I'm just sitting here listening to Swiss Family Robinson and little Chanda Bing has climbed upon me here I have about a half an hour left of Swiss Family Robinson so I'm gonna finish it before I go to bed guys I don't like it so I'm sorry if it's one of your favorite classics, but I'm not a fan, and I'll explain why when I finish it, just in case it takes an awesome turn or something. But so far, it's been... Look at this cat. Look how perfect he is. So I talked a little bit about in my first vlog that I did since coming back onto BookTube about how he's an emotional support cat. Um, and this is one of the things that he does is if I'm stressed or like overstimulated, which today I'm not stressed, I'm just kind of overstimulated, um, just from having like a busy day and going out and doing stuff. Um, he just kind of like lays on me and makes sure that I can calm down and chill out. Um, so he's an emotional support animal, which is different than a therapy animal. Therapy animal does like special training and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, that they have to do, like, through someone that gets them registered as a therapy animal, but I did look up some of that training for cats, and I did it with him, um, when I first got him. Oh, oh hi, baby. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, okay, go back to sleep. Okay, that's too many kisses? Too many kisses? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, but anyway, uh... I don't think he was fully ready to leave his mom, but he was very good about training. Like, he trained very easily. 
Uh, the only time he kind of acted up was right around the time he needed to be fixed. And uh, there was like a month of chaos in our life because he has <laughs> too many kisses. Uh, but there was like a month of chaos in our life before he got fixed. But now he is fixed. And he just turned a year old. So he is one year. Um, but he... <laughs> Look at his face. I can't. Oh, God, you're so precious. Okay, y'all. It's 2.45 in the morning. I just finished Swiss Family Robinson, and I did it as an audiobook. Um, yeah. I didn't like it. I gave it one star. Um, somebody wrote a review on Goodreads that I think best sums up why I didn't like it. First of all, I did not like it because um, the only female character... Okay, not the only female character. There's another female character later on in the book but one of the female characters has no name uh just referred to as mother or my wife um you know just by the title in which she is owned within the family uh which I do not love um and again you know I'm one of those people that I'm like oh man it's a book of its time and I understand that I really really do understand that I do um, I am not somebody who picks up a classic and goes, hmm, this is going to align with all my morals and values. Um, no, I am not that person. Um, but I do think that books written back then, most of them did name their characters. And the fact that this guy did not even name his characters. Who was it? Is Johann David Weiss? Is that how you say his name? I think that's how you say his name. Um, you know, the fact that he didn't even name his female character. He was just like, meh, you're a mother. Let's tell you why. Let's tell you good play. Me. Um, and there was a part early on in it where basically the wife did something and the narrator was proud of her. So he was like, oh, tonight we're going to establish ourselves in our treehouse. Why are you freaking thinking about doing the nasty when you are stranded on an island? Like, hmm, it wasn't even, like, he wasn't even, they weren't even there for that long at that point. He was like, mm, tonight's the night in the treehouse, you know, us, because you did good, you did good, my little wife. Like, that just, just bothers me, and I'm like, you know what? It's a book of its time it's a book of its time and I kept saying it I'm like yep this would have happened in that time period this would have happened in that time period and then we get to the ridiculousness first of all they're eating fruit they don't know they're eating animals they don't know they're killing everything they see killing everything they see taking over everything they see oh it's all theirs it's, it's oh they're there they're, they're taking it uh you know the people who live on the island they're like whatever with you we're just gonna we're gonna do our own thing you know we're we're white, so we're awesome, you know, and that's just, it just bothered me. It just bothered me so much, and I was just like, ugh, you know, and I kept going, it's, it's a book of its time. It's a book of its time. It's a book of its time, but was it? Was it? Because this was written in the 1800s, and I'm like, mm, you know, I'm pretty sure by the 1800s, women had names, and I'm pretty sure by the 1800s, we knew some fruit you don't just go up and eat if you don't know what it is, because it could kill you. You know, uh, so it was, it was, yeah. Um, there was at one point they killed a kangaroo. That was a, a good little read there. Yeah, that was enjoyable for me, who is an animal lover, uh, for the, for to read that. Uh, but yeah, it's just, and like the things are so unrealistic. They're like, oh, all the things that we need to make gunpowder are right here on this island that we're stranded upon. All the things that we need to build a gigantic treehouse right on this island. All the things we need, like everything they needed just happened to be there. I'm like, what magic island did you wash up on? And then they're like, mm, you know, we'll just live here. This is fine. We like this life. This is a good life for us. And I'm just like, really? Really? They got kids running around, killing things. They've got people, you know, oh God, it was just a bad book. It was just a bad book. And I was on Goodreads and I was like, nobody really likes this book. Like there's reviews on there. Like the highest review I read was like a four star. I was like, ooh, uh, you know, and I am trying to appreciate the classics, um, but yeah, that was, that was a tough one. That was a tough one to read. Um, but now, because I have not tortured myself enough, I'm going to watch the movie version on Disney Plus. And like I said, it's 2.45 in the morning, going on 3 a.m. 
um, and I am about to start a two hour and six minute movie of a book I didn't really like. That's what I'm doing. Um, and I'm doing that because I'm doing a Disney book challenge. So I read this book because it is a book that was turned into a Disney movie. Sorry if you can hear that noise in the background. That is my cat. <laughs> um, but I did, um, like the whole point of the challenge is to read the book and then watch the Disney movie and kind of see how it compares and stuff like that. Like that's the Disney book challenge thing. It's not all Disney movies that were based off a book, but it's like most of them. Um, but anyway, so this one, and I actually popped on the screen. I was going to talk about this in the morning, but I thought this was really interesting. So Disney wrote, um, on the beginning of this movie, Disney plus has put in here, um, I have to wait for it to pull up, but it says, um, it, oh, it's not going to show it because the movie already started, but it actually, I, I, so I don't know the exact words, but it basically said like, this is a movie of its time and, uh, we don't agree with any of the things that these characters did and things are very, um, prejudiced and racist and sorry about that. Um, so, you know, like we didn't want to alter the movie, but, um, just know before you're going in there and I'm like, wow, does anyone to cover your tracks? But it just cracks me up because if you watch Lilo and Stitch on Disney Plus, plush, and on Disney Plus, Lilo is hiding behind a pizza box instead of hiding in the washer and they changed that, but they didn't change anything in Swiss Family Robinson. They were just like, disclaimer, this movie's horrible. So, uh, watch at your own risk. So yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna jump into this puppy and see how it goes. Alright guys, ugh, I just turned my light back on. I can't with the movie. I tried. I got halfway through it and then I was just like, no. Like, it's pretty much like the book, so if you want a movie that's like the book, it's pretty accurate. Except they left out an entire character. Like, there's supposed to be four sons and the movie only has three sons. Um, and then there's like a couple differences. Um, yeah, I don't get the hype of the movie either. Like, I don't know why why i don't know like i really like going to disney world and going to the swiss family robinson treehouse like that's really cool i like walking up to a cool treehouse but i just don't get i don't get the book i don't get the movie i never actually told you guys what the book was about i guess it's a classic so i just kind of assume people know what it's about um but it is just about like a family that's shipwrecked on an island and they like rebuild their lives on an island they make like a giant treehouse um, to live in and then they're just kind of like going up against like the natives of the island and animals of the island and weather of the island like it's just all it's like your typical like got shipwrecked kind of thing but I guess it was like the first shipwrecked story or like among the first shipwrecked story I don't know I just don't get the hype I don't understand it it's also like almost like four o'clock in the morning so I don't even really know what I'm saying at this point um, but yeah, I'm gonna finish doing a couple things and I'm probably not gonna read because it's four o'clock in the morning, though I might, uh, but probably not. So I'm just gonna finish up like a couple things that I'm doing and then go to bed. Hello, it is Wednesday at three o'clock, actually, exactly. Um, I just got to work. I actually slept right up until I had to be here. So I slept till like 2.30 this afternoon because I didn't fall asleep till seven in the morning. Um, and the reason for that is I just started thinking about all the stuff that happened in Texas and Buffalo and just having super bad anxiety and sad and just, yeah. So didn't fall asleep. I ended up having to take this one medication to help me fall asleep that makes me a zombie. So I am so out of it right now but I don't have my first soloist, so I just can spend the first hour cleaning, which is really nice, um, and listening to my audiobook. I did start last night when I couldn't sleep, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz on audiobook by L. Frank Baum. I'm sure you all know what it's about, but if you don't know what it's about, it's about a girl from Kansas who gets swept up in a tornado and taken to the magical land of Oz where she meets all these colorful characters and they're helping her to try to get home. Um, so yeah, so that, 
I started listening to that. I have like an hour left on it, so I might even be able to finish it. I think people start coming in at like 3.30, 3.45 though, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish the whole thing. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do some cleaning and just go from there and try to teach without being a zombie. I do have my Dr. Pepper and cream soda to try to wake me up. Um, and this is the night that Ava does take class at the studio. So this is the night that she comes and does her acro and contortion class. So if I need my brother to, I can ask him to bring me another soda when he drops her off. So, but yeah, until then, we're just cleaning and getting ready for my first solo. My next soloist is at four. So I have about an hour. <laughs> So it is a little after midnight. Um, I had a pretty good day at work. I'm just so tired. Like I said, I didn't go to bed until seven in the morning. Um, and I did sleep quite a bit, but I just like, it was not a peaceful sleep. It was, it was waking up, I was having nightmares, all that stuff. So, um, so now I'm going to, oh, you guys can see my uh, beautiful, trash bag and cereal display back here it's just because Chandler can get into the lower cupboards and he you know is basically like having a mouse uh he'll eat things oh he saw me and he wants to play but it's midnight it's actually like 12 30 um so I don't think we're gonna play right now because I'm pretty tired I did just finish listening to the wonderful Wizard of Oz on audiobook um I did give it five stars I thought it was really good if not super close to where I live but maybe like say like an hour away maybe a little closer than that there is like the city of Chittenango where like L. Frank Baum was born and like it's like all about the Wizard of Oz and they have like a Wizard of Oz themed library and stuff maybe one day I'll take an adventure there to show you guys um but yeah if you don't notice I'm editing a couple things right now I'm ad actually editing the video of me saying that I'm back so uh, that has not even gone up yet, surprisingly, while I'm recording this, and I'm already recording more things, so that's exciting. Um, but I am exhausted, so I'm going to post that, and then I'm headed to bed. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It is like 9 in the morning. I didn't sleep well again last night, so I'm going to go back to sleep in a little bit, but I had to get up early this morning um, for therapy. I do it over telehealth, but um, I still got to get up and be present. Um... But yeah, I, it's a, I, I've had a new therapist for the past month and a half now. So my old therapist who I absolutely adore, she ended up opening up a private practice that doesn't take insurance yet. So I was unable to continue with her and then I stopped going to therapy for a little bit and then I was like, oh, I need therapy. So I am seeing a new person right now. Uh, so one of the things that when I was editing my video last night, I realized I left out an entire book in the video of me talking about the books that kind of got me back on track with reading. And I kind of just put in the video, like I didn't want to like get up and like film about the book right then and there. Um, what it was, but I just put in the video that I would say it in my vlog. So this is me saying it in my vlog. So it was um, The Ballad of S Songbirds and Snakes by Susan Collins, which is the prequel to The Hunger Game, and it's about President Snow's life, and he is living in the Capitol, and he gets picked to be um, a mentor for the kids that are going into The Hunger Games, and he is assigned, like, one of the worst people because it's the District 12 girl, and he believes that there's no way she'd survive, and it's kind of just, like, his story of, you know, how he became President Snow, and the kind of the things that happened that twisted his fate from being a innocent student to the wicked president that we see in the Hunger Game books. So, it was a, it was a good read. I gave it four stars. Um, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like as good as the Hunger Games, but it was still pretty good. And I did listen to it on audiobook and I thought the audiobook was really well done. So, uh, I just, just want to touch on that because I left it completely out of the video that I made and I was like, you know, what? I don't even want to film about it because it was like four in the morning at that point and I'm like, I just don't even know like what I would say. So, oh, oh my gosh. 
so yeah, so that's just kind of like the synopsis. I thought it was good. I just didn't think it was as good as the Hunger Game books. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to sleep for a little bit, even though it's nine in the morning. I'm just pooped. Um, so I'm gonna lay down for a little bit and then I'm gonna go to work. I will see you guys uh when I wake back up. So I'm really sucking at this vlogging thing lately. I am laying here editing it and uh, I completely forgot to talk about another book, um, but luckily I remembered at least while I'm still in the process of editing this vlog, um, but it was Thursday night, yeah, oh, hi Chandler, <laughs> um, but Thursday night I ended up listening to, while I was working on stuff, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the audiobook of that, and I was really excited to read it because this year... Um, my studio is doing a production number of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, which is basically like a 10 minute long dance of like the kids like acting out like what happens in the book and the movie and stuff like that. So like one section is like Augustus and Augustus's mom and the Chocolate River, um, like dancers playing like the Chocolate River. And like the song is like, I'm so hungry. I'm so, I'm so hungry. Um, <laughs> Chandler. Um, and then my niece is actually playing Violet Beauregard in it. So like, Violet, you're turning Violet. Um, so like she does like a little like tumbling section with a girl who's playing like her mom and then two girls who are playing bubblegum. Um, and, uh, they do the song, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. Uh, so it's really fun. What do you want? Did you bring me a toy? Is that what you want? Okay. You wanted me to throw the ball. Um, so yeah, so that's really fun dance. And so I really wanted to read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory before our recital which is coming up very very soon it's coming up in like three weeks um so yeah so I wanted to touch on that and also um while I'm editing editing I was like planning on making this vlog go through like Memorial Day weekend but it's already really long so I'm going to actually stop it here um oh did I say that I gave Charlie and Chocolate, Chocolate Factory five stars I did I gave it five stars I've read it before like I knew it was a five star read um and if you guys don't know what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is about it's about a boy named Charlie who is one of five lucky kids who finds the golden ticket in a Wonka bar which allows them to go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and they're all competing for a prize while they're getting a tour of this chocolate factory. It, you, I'm sure you guys know what it's about. But anyway, so I decided that I'm going to wrap the vlog up here because it's long and I'm just going to make a different long, or different long, probably another long one because I can't vlog anymore and I don't know how to edit or anything. I'm just a mess. I'm a mess. Um, but I'm going to make a separate vlog for Memorial Day weekend. So starting from Friday to Monday, Tuesday-ish, um, we'll do a vlog for that. So yeah, so that is all for this one. Thank you guys for bearing with me. I know that this was probably not great editing and not great like filming and stuff like that I'm still getting back into the hang of things so bear with me it will be better over the coming weeks but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye